What's up everybody, uh, Christian here, and today I wanted to do a kind of a DVD update mini review of the movies that I got. Uh, funny thing is, when I made this channel, that's honestly what I specifically made it for, was to do like reviews and stuff and, you know, share DVDs that I collect and stuff, and I haven't really done it. It turned into showing off, you know, figures and stuff. But uh, I got a lot of movies that I wanted to show and just, uh, you know, see what you guys thought about them and see what you think, if maybe you've got them and you like them. Or, uh, you know, whatever. But uh, a lot of these I've had for over a month. I'm, I'm calling this kind of like the monthly DVD update. Even though I don't really do it. But some of these I've gotten for Christmas and whatnot. And I'm just going to share, you know, the ones that I've gotten as of, as of recent. And, uh, you know, let's get to it. The first movie I got right here is the Scream Factory, a.k.a. Shout Factory, Halloween 2 Collector's Edition. And, um... This is really great. Um, the special features are awesome. I love, you know, the, the make. It's basically the making of, the making of Halloween Two. It's got interviews, you know, Dean Cundey returned. Um, uh, Rick Rosenthal directed. He did a good job, you know. Uh, Dick Warlock, who's funny. I love Dick Warlock, the uh, stunt coordinator. It was all great. Great uh, DVD. I like that they have the TV version here too. Um, you see, it's two disc. There's the second disc. It's a TV cut. And that's the first disc. It's really great. Um, I love it. Halloween 2. It's not my favorite Halloween, but it doesn't suck. It's good. I like that, you know, being, studying to be a nurse. I like that it took place in a hospital. You know, it's just, you know, it's cool. So that's the first movie. Um, just got this today, actually. Uh, picked it up for $5 at uh, Books of a Million, believe it or not. Texas Chainsaw Next Generation. I actually don't dislike this one. I think it's okay. Um, is it the best? No. Was it intended to be the best? Probably not. It was just, you know, they were still recapping off of popularity. And uh, this came out in 94, so this was four years after Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. So, um, I don't know. It's not too bad. You know, Matthew McConaughey's in it. You know, it's where he got his start, I believe. But uh, I like it. It's got a nice little, I like the feel to it. It's got a nice 90s feel to it. But, uh, yeah, so there's that. Um... I got this also from Books A Million, uh, The Fog. Uh, absolutely adore this movie. Um, uh, it's just, you know, it's John Carpenter's next movie right after his big hit to Halloween. And he didn't want to just jump into Halloween 2, even though um, Erwin Yablons was begging him to do it directly after the Halloween had capitalized. He didn't want to do it because he felt that Halloween was a fluke, honestly. So he said, I want to do something else. So he did The Fog, and it made a hell of a lot of money. didn't make near as much as Halloween. But, you know, still, he it, the movie made, like, 500% of what what, uh, what it was spent to make. So, yeah. Next, I've got Stone Cold Steve Austin, the bottom line, the most popular superstar of all time. Love this. This is a... Uh, I actually used to have a lot of wrestling movies, and I ended up selling them all because I just had burnt, was burnt out on them when I watched them. But this thing is awesome. You can see it's got four discs. The fourth disc is my favorite. It's non-stop just promos, and it that's what I love. I love the promos in wrestling, you know. That's why a lot of people watch wrestling, is to watch the good promos. And uh, that DVD is awesome. If you're not really a wrestling fan, you can still really enjoy this, I promise you. So, you can check this out. You, I got this at a pawn shop for, I think it was like $7. Awesome money. money awesome money spent on that, so that was awesome. Next I got right here is the... Nightmare on Elm Street documentary, Never Sleep Again. This is a incredible documentary. Um, probably the best documentary I've ever watched. Um, I mean, I haven't seen too many others. I've got 25 years of terror, or 10, 20, or whatever, for Halloween, which is pretty good. And I've got, his name was Jason, which I, I, I like, but I don't like it because, you know, I like that it's Friday the 13th related. But I can't stand that. It's just too jumpy. And this was... This is how a documentary should be. It's movie by movie. Wes Craven, Heather, all the guys, Robert, they all talk about... If you were involved in the first movie, you talk in, about the first movie. And when everything was said, they go to the next one. You know, and you learn really cool stuff. I mean, I, I learned about the whole psychosexual tonicity of part two, which I had never noticed. Um, but now, you know, that I watched this, you learn that part two is a very homoerotic... Nightmare on Elm Street. It did. I, that was my favorite. And even the directors, all the guys, said they had no idea it had that theme, but it, it was definitely present. 
And after watching Freddy's Revenge, you definitely see like the gay overtones in it. But I found it, I find it very interesting. I still like part two. It's actually my favorite. Moving on, the next thing I got right here is the real Ghostbusters. Um, and this is how you make it. This is how you make a DVD. This a really nice tin. You can see it's kind of holographic. I don't know. If, get it closed and maybe you can check it out. Really great uh, show. Um, I got into the Ninja Turtle cartoons and I have every season of that. And um, I said, I wonder if this Ghostbusters is any good. And I'd like to get more of these. I can't really find any more. But uh, this is a great, this is a great show. I actually really enjoyed it. And they really know how to, like I said, they really know how to package their movies. So uh, two thumbs up to the real Ghostbusters. I, I want to get the video game on Game Boy 2 now that I've gotten into the real Ghostbusters. Okay, next is John Carpenter's They Live. This is another uh, Scream Factory release. Um, Roddy Piper stars in this movie. Um, the only wrestler to ever be in a movie that debuted number one at the box office on opening weekend. So Hulk Hogan, you can kiss Roddy Piper's ass, you know. A lot of controversy when this movie started with Roddy. Uh, Vince McMahon did not want him to do this because, you know, John Carpenter, being a wrestling fan, liked Roddy. Roddy had that, you know, blue-collar style to him and really wanted to uh, use Roddy in the movie, so... It was really cool that uh, Roddy was the only wrestler, not Hulk Hogan, you know. It's really cool that Roddy was the first wrestler to debut number one in the box office. And it's a great movie, too. I like the like the style of it. Next movie is Killer Clowns from Outer Space, Blu-ray release. Got this at Best Buy for $5, I think. Um, I still like the way the DVD looks for the Midnight, Midnight movies, but... The, you know, five dollars. And to be honest with you, the transfer really isn't much better. Um, not really much better than the DVD at all. But you know what? What the hell? The cover's pretty cool. Nice artwork. So, uh, but it does have a few extra special features. So it evens out. This next movie was for collecting for collectors purposes only. I'm a Stallone fan, and I have ninety-seven percent of all his movies. Ninety-eight percent now, if you will. And uh, here you go. Uh, it's bootleg, but you know it's the best we could do. A party at Kitten Studs, aka the Italian Stallion. Um, the less said, the best said about that. Okay, next we've got House Two, the second story. Um, not a terrible movie. Um, I definitely, you know, I enjoy the, the first house better. Um, Sean Cunningham produced it. Um, Sean Cunningham, Friday, who uh, directed Friday the 13th. House 2, uh, it stars Laura Park Lincoln, um, and she was in uh, Friday the 13th Part 7, The New Blood. This, it's not a bad movie. It's got a good feel to it. I like I like the atmosphere of it, but it's kind of more jokey. It's a little too jokey. House was kind of jokey and, you know, kind of like a pokey fun, but this was, it's a little too much. You don't really, it doesn't have the same charm that House did, the original. But, it's not a terrible movie. If you haven't seen it, uh, it's a nice popcorn movie. So, Next, I got this a while back, but I don't think I ever showed it. Um, I've got the Demonic Toys box set. Um, I actually found this at a Dollar General, believe it or not. Um, it's weird that you'll find Full Moon stuff at random places. Like, um, you'll see, like, you go to Fred's. I don't know if... I live in Louisiana. We have Fred's. You may have different versions of, like... It's like a medium-sized department store. And, like, you'll, they'll have, like, random movies, and you'll find, you know, full moon stuff. And I actually found this, like I said, at Dollar General. It was brand new, and it was only, you know, $9. And it's got, you know, the demonic toys, Dollman, which I've yet to watch. But uh, I watched uh, one of my, friend, one of my friend's uh, page, and he said he liked Dollman. So I'll have to check it out. And Dollman vs. Demonic Toys, which I've watched. Which I've watched. It's all right. And, you know... You can't take a, you don't watch a full moon movie to take it seriously. You watch it to, you know, just laugh and have a good time. And, you know, that's what's what they're there for. But I'm a full moon fan. I like Charles Band. Next is, uh, I got on Blu-ray Subspecies, another full moon movie. Um, I really had high hopes for this. But I just found it draggy, slow. It was just really, I found it boring. The... Stop motion, I really liked. Uh, the, it was very eye-catching for some scenes, but I just wasn't drawn into the story much, and 
you know, I just, you know, I don't know. I, I just really couldn't get into it. But, uh, oh well, you know, win some, lose some. I'm not saying it's a bad film. I'm not saying it. It, it was, it was a very, it was a well-made film. The acting was, probably, I'd give the acting about a six and a half out of ten. But, it, you know, I just, it wasn't a, it wasn't a home run for me. Next we've got, uh, I have the Puppet Master, uh, first one on Blu-ray. I have all the Puppet Masters. I have the box set, um, right here. But, uh, I wanted to get this because I heard the transfer was very well. And it is. The transfer's uh, pretty damn good on the Blu-ray, so... Uh, there's nothing I need to say about that that nobody doesn't know about. Next we have... We're almost done. Son-in-Law. Um, I watched this on TV one day, and I... I didn't... I didn't know what the name of the movie was. I just I flipped channels and it was on. And I was... I had nothing else to watch, so I watched it. And ended up watching this, and I really liked it. And then I saw it at Walmart, and I knew what it was by, uh, Pauly Shore on the front. So, uh... I got it, and this was a five dollars, you know, at Walmart. Really good movie. I like it. Uh, I don't know. I just thought it was funny. So, and here we go. We have this is the last movie, Donnie Darko. Um, this is the ten year uh, Blu-ray. I have to watch this again to really, you know, get into it again. But it was good. Uh, I, I like the Frank the. I want a Frank the Bunny outfit. I think it was really badass. But, uh, there we go. And I got this today, uh, by Books A Million Horror Hound magazine. Really cool. It's got, it's got one of the conventions that I'm going to be going to in July. Uh, let me find it. Texas Frightmare. Can't wait for that. That's in May. Uh, I think, yeah, May. And I'm really excited to go see Ted White, who is Jason in Part 4. Heather Camp's going to be there. Clue Gallagher. Um, Nick Castle, well, I don't know, I don't really like him. Jeffrey Combs is going to be there, and uh, Danny Trejo. So it's going to be exciting. Hope it doesn't cost too much money to take pictures with some people and stuff, and hope the lines are to them. But I like these magazines. I've got some other horror magazines, but they're really old, and, you know, they're hanging up on the wall. One signed by Kane Hodder, and, you know, another one's a part eight. But this is new, and I like Horror Hound, so I'm going to start getting into these more.